Welcome to the Phi Life Podcast. I'm John Barber, and with me is Brad Pilon. And today we're going to talk about uh, something that you probably, I mean, people in in the supplement industry would recognize this, but um, anyone who's ever purchased a supplement and doesn't know anything about the industry is probably going to be pretty shocked to find out um, that this is one of the ways supplements get put together, and it's based on the packaging. Um, I've been involved in this, and Brad's for sure have been involved in this situation where uh, when we're developing a new product, uh, we actually work backwards from the packaging. So it, the dose that we're going to have in the product, um, the ingredients in the product, um, get determined at least to some degree, and in some cases to a large degree, just based on how they fit in the package. Um, the package being either the size of the capsule, the, the size of the bottle, if the bottle has to be in a box, um, the, all that stuff. So, I mean, it does kind of... It's, it's crazy when you think about it that... that you know, you, you're going to be putting this thing in your body and, and hoping that it does something. And there's some kind of claim, you know, that the, the manufacturer is making, saying it, you know, this this will do X or Y if you take it on a regular basis. And at some point, you know, we were sitting in a marketing room thinking, well, the right dose or the dose we should have is, you know, whatever it is. But because of the packaging, we have to cut that in half and then just try to explain our way out of it. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it's. Not that much different from any other industry. The, the key here is that the the packaging is is your last line of defense between you and the customer. It's it's what the customer sees when they're holding your product in their hand, determining you know am I going to buy this or not. So, and the packaging is the thing that holds your claims, right? So not only does the product have to fit into the packaging, whether it's the pill, the powder, the you know whatever it takes to make it novel. You know, or, or different in the industry, but it's the uh, that outer packaging, the bottle or the box or the bottle in the box, that I mean, that's where everything comes from. It's a claim-based industry. You cannot sell a supplement without claims. It does not work. In fact, I've even been involved in trying to do it, and it was a miserable failure. Um, just like any other industry, it is claims that drive the sale of supplements, right? So the packaging not only has to fit the claim. Uh, in terms of, you know, it has to have the right look for the claim, but everything has to be right. So, if, you know, well, the claim also has to fit on the packaging. Well, exactly, yeah, and vice versa. I mean, it, nothing can be out of place when, when you're at that final stage of, of making a purchase. The supplement all has to make sense, right? So, if you have hardcore drug-like claims on your product, that packaging better be hardcore and drug-like, or, or you know. On another vein, you can't have really toned down for house mums type product, and then have the thing in like you know a pseudo vial that you you know squirt sublingually. It, it doesn't make sense. Everything has to match together, and um, yeah, I don't think people just realize how important packaging is to the entire supplement story. Yeah, the presentation of the product changes your the customer's view of the potency of the product if it's for them or not. Um, you know, it, you don't, you wouldn't make a product for muscle building in sort of toned down light blues and pink colors for for guys. I mean, right? Off, I'm sure that just doesn't sound right at all. You, you, no. you know, if you go look at that, it, it's always in the darker colors. There's going to be silvers, blacks, uh, reds, uh, pur- purples, like really dark stuff, and that's yeah, absolutely. You know, that's what's associated with sort of performance. It's kind of like whatever color you'd. Um, You'd produce like a, a hot rod in that's kind of, you know, that's sort of what you would do for your sports team, you know, yeah, that, that sort of teams. thing. Yeah. And, and the the people who really do the, the awesome work and, you know, the, I'd say the keep ahead of the Joneses work is the actual packaging companies that we work with. I mean, they do phenomenal work to make sure that, you know, everything looks fantastic. I mean, you take, what's a company that's phenomenal packaging, Gillette, <laughs> right, in your mock. 13 razors or whatever is out now, right? I mean, the packaging is mind-blowing, right? It, take a look at that packaging, then go to your GNC and look at what's on the shelves there. A lot of similarities. I mean, they, they've really got stepped up their game. The, the days of the, you know, Mega Muscle 5000 with a picture of some jack dude flexing on it on, on some crappy paper label are long gone. These things are embossed. They're They're... You know, UV coated, ultra high gloss, or you know, sometimes they're matte to stand out. Um, they're mirror, they're mirror not. holographic labels. Absolutely. I mean, they, they've, they've, and people kind of laugh at that as a waste of money, but it, it is a difference between a sale and not a sale. I mean, I've done enough packaging design. In fact. I've-